flatter route. One was New York Central Station, as I understand it. The other one was for the Lauville and Beaver River, which ran up to uh, Krogan. And that track's still in place. That was to serve, basically it serves paper mills. Why that railroad existed in the first place. We're trying to revive that. Just a nonprofit group trying to do things, but some of the crossings have even been paved over up there, so they've gotten that pulled out. They still have the old Shea up there, which is just it's recently run out of its certification, so they can't fire it up I think they'd like to get that going, but refurbing a steam locomotive like that takes a lot of time. Um, probably more than the locomotive cost, even in today's dollars. Carthage, which I believe is now gone. That was a busy place. Several railroads uh, working through there because from Carthage you can leave and go straight to Watertown. You can go up to Philly and go north. You can go back over came in there and eventually New York Central. You see it was uh, quite, the, uh, quite the, the station grounds and they kept it up very nicely. It was a busy place. There's Philadelphia, crossroads of the rural Watertown and Ogden and the Union Black River. Eventually, just the road water town of Eventually, New York Central. Now, there's still a junction there, and that track goes down, does go down to Carthage, and uh, Port Town is served off uh, the line of Kelsey. And there's still some business down that way. Not a lot, so bit, mostly slack cattle. Well, I think there's a paper company still in stuff down there. A little, little story about that that I found in reading about this was that. Uh, Occasionally, Road Water Town and Eisenberg would block the diamond. That's a place where two tracks cross. And, uh, well, that's too bad there. You can black her or your train can't get through. We owned the crossing because we were here first, and so we'll do what we want to do. And I can remember references, uh, hearing references in uh, Philadelphia because there were actually at least three Y tracks there, uh, transfer tracks, to go from the north, south, to the east, west. And one of them uh, in the southwest corner was known as the Clayton Y, even though it didn't even come close to going to Clayton anymore. That track's no longer there. Theresa, the station was just off uh, the Marshall Road. That's obviously no longer there either. But you wouldn't have gone through there unless you were coming from up north. You would have to go to Philadelphia, change trains, and go to Clayton. Even today, if you look at the, at the trail, you can see that there was a, a Y that split at Rivergate, and one track came over to Clayton, and one track went north up through Theresa, Redwood, and so on. And uh, there was no way to get from Theresa to Clayton except for going to Philly and then coming back. Lafargeville, most of you have seen that building. Okay. Never been in it. I actually have a document. I couldn't find it to scan. Uh, it was shipping document for household goods for the Reverend at uh, one of the churches in Depolo. Probably the Methodist. I think that was at the parsonage there. Dickies live now. Uh, coming from I believe Sandy Creek. So it was a bill of a uh, shipping document for household goods from Sandy Creek. Very hard. So we had to bring my wagon over to the to, to bowl over there it was. So I'm talking about getting your products out. First shipping the cheese and butter from Farmville in 1873. So I'm sure the farmers were very happy. They could have had another market for their, uh, for their produce, hay, and everything else. And supplies coming in as well. You name it, it went by rail. As a matter of fact, you'll notice behind the uh, station there in LaFargeville, a New York, New Haven, and Hartford railroad car. So it came in from uh, someplace, probably from down in uh, that area. And there we are, we're in Clayton. Most people have seen this picture. There's more versions of this out there from different sources. And uh, this, this one's from uh, Thousand Isles Museum, but as I say, they're everywhere, they're black and white, they're colored, the whole thing. And it does show how busy the station was. and emphasizes the fact that people can step off the train and get on the steamers. We did. Obviously, the train has just come in. They're trying to load up the steamers. Anybody want any popcorn? <laughs> See the little guy down there with the, with the box in front of him? 
Der er sød snap på den. I had to blow that up a little. like, really? Absolutely. Uh, Bummer out there getting, uh, sell, trying to sell some popcorn. A little view probably from the cold out of uh, a couple of the boats with steamers in. And I found this picture fascinating because notice the news kiosk. And what do we have in Frank Park now? It's not a news kiosk, but there's a kiosk uh, in Frank Park. So I found that uh, interesting, to say the least. This picture may have been somewhat created. Uh, these uh, you know, folks that made these postcards and stuff were very fond of gluing stuff into the pictures. Uh, you see uh, an airplane in the picture that, uh, well, there was no airplane flying at that point in time. They just stuck it in the picture. Or they would take a station and splice that station together with a crowd, so it looks like there's a huge crowd at the station, and really it's too completely, if you look real carefully, you can see what they did. Back then they didn't have Photoshop, so they had to you know, cut images and, and cut some negatives and everything else. And uh, 1920, the guy in his uh, nice straw hat there. And uh, at that time, especially if you're riding the club cars, the, the Coleman, or not the Coleman, the Coleman cars, either the sleepers or the uh, parlor cars, you rode in style. You, know, you didn't see people riding in their blue jeans. If you did, they were probably a farmer going from point A to point B. Uh, if you were traveling, especially if you're coming up to where, where a lot of these folks were going, they were dressed, dressed for the occasion. And there's Frank Cole, and remember that dog on the last slide? I don't know if that's the same one or not, but I'm guessing maybe it was. Maybe been a station mascot. Yes, that image looks familiar. Steamer America, and again, as, as the poster shows, and, and as you can see here, folks getting right straight off the train and onto the steamers. Well, here's the, uh, here was the layout, some valuation maps of the area, and you can see where the station was down here in the uh, kind of lower right corner. You see the Cotswold Hall coal dock there, free station over a little further. So it helps get you oriented to where everything was, and the station was actually right at the foot of Webb Street. So we're not too far off of the pavilion, pretty much almost where the station was, although the station was probably a little closer to Riverside Drive. It was now Riverside Drive, it was Water Street. But nonetheless, there was a lot of track there, a lot of trains coming in. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit. And, uh, Hotel, Kilo Franklin Street is. This image doesn't show anything from French, but that other one I have does. And a little further back, there's Mary Street, there's the turntable. Turntable right above where the sewage pipe is. Curiously, round, round structure, round structure, yeah, real close to each other there. And uh, how many have heard of? Gardner Street. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Street. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now we know it is, uh, it is uh, the island. You know, the island. Like an island over. But uh, there you go. And, and you can see that, uh, yes, there was a siding right above where Windgrass is. It was. Auto ramp. Must be they brought cars in here. Followed by boxcar, which is how they were shipped in the early days. And not loaded them there. So if you bought a car back then that came in by train, it made a trip down that ramp. There's pictures around Clayton where they show a whole line of Model A's or T's hooked together where they hook them all together over there and then tow them all the way around Clayton all hooked together. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Yeah. It wasn't something I was looking for, so I wouldn't have found it. Uh, but but if you ever see the lineup, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Well, the, and, you know, there, there's your color that goes along with, you know, it's a little, little bit of, uh, uh, of the map here, but it just shows you uh, exactly how involved the railroad was with all this stuff. And uh, the, the lessees there, that, uh, who own some of those properties there, they're marked. And here's a slightly different map. Shows much of the same stuff. Well, let's see uh, where Franklin Street would have been. It came all the way down to the rail yard. And 
again the station is directly in the Web Street. And now we're showing the French Hill. So I'm going to have a year on this, on this particular scan. And this one came from New Zealand. So why'd they come to Clayton? Well, we all know why they came to Clayton, but the Air Central was big on getting people to Clayton. Everybody that bought a ticket was in call. One of the steamers, I didn't read the name on it. Uh, they actually worked with the uh, Folger system. I read about it, I didn't get deep, deeply in the Folger system, but uh, there was a, apparently a system of old lines. But they all worked together. And I actually looked at this problem with rapids. And talking about schedules, here's 1906. This was the first class stuff. This was the uh, sleeping cars and the parlor cars. And you can see you can leave New York City at 7.16 p.m. Grand Central Station and arrive at Clayton the next morning at 6.28 a.m. After a refreshing night's sleep on the way up. The car would change, very possibly change trains in Utica and then come up the line from there. Uh, the next one, uh, Grand Central at uh, 7.45 a.m. You get in at 6.10 p.m. So come up here and uh, up, up. you'd be here in time for dinner. Yeah, the steamer go out and move the lake summer dinner. And uh, other examples there as well. Southbound leaving Clayton, you leave Clayton at uh, 6 40 p.m. I think it says. And you arrive at Grand Central at 7 o'clock in the morning. Just the time to do some business. And that was an important factor, by the way. A lot of folks would come up, a businessman would come up and spend the weekend up here, possibly with their families, and then now they'd be back in New York City in time for their day's business. And uh, this was uh, the, the, the club train. This was a 1908 picture, so right along the lines of that uh, schedule I just showed you. And the club train was was the, I'm quite certain I haven't found uh, that reference for sure, but uh, that, that was the, the train with the sleepers, the power, power cars. So you travel uh, travel north on the club train. You come up here, spin the locomotive, and work on sending it back. And there's some general schedules. A little hard to read, but uh, nonetheless, every yellow line is where Clayton was mentioned. Same thing here. And the same thing here from 1906. Actually, this is scans from the schedule of the timetable that I have in my collection. 20 trains a day, well, maybe not quite, but uh, in 1873, eight arrivals, 11 departures. I think I have that timetable, I couldn't find it. Uh, very similar in 1806. And the, you, you can check uh, Niagara Falls and find the train that was headed for Clayton. Uh, part of the problem with that was that uh, you have to, I started having to look at time, the list times for arrivals and departures in Clayton because even though, you know, there was a train coming from New York City and one coming from Utica and one from Syracuse and one from they, they were all arriving in Clayton at the same time, so they were all a collection of the same cars. So it's just one train as opposed to four or five. The prime reason to take the train? Well, the river and the lake to a certain extent. And this was uh, this is not a railroad schedule. If you look at some of the stations on there, that's all steamer stops on the river. If you wanted to go to Alex Bay and stay in Alex Bay, you can come to Clayton, get off the train, take the steamer to Alex Bay, and away you go. Of course, they stop at the various hotels and stuff as well. Um, 1914, this was actually an excursion schedule. They ran it just like Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. But to uh, give you an idea what kind of times they were running, you know, Syracuse at 8.15 in the morning. Now, let's see. Clayton uh, about 11 o'clock. Didn't have much time to spend. We took this up here, but you could do the Island Ramble while you were there. And you could just about run this ad today for the cruise lines. But this was from 1908. So business on the river hasn't changed an awful lot in all that time. Where were they headed? Rolling Island, the Pontiac, the Murray Hill.
Maria and Maria Island. The Hub House. Interesting reading about the Hub House was that the uh, they were they were wet. They were serving alcohol. Thousand Islands Park, which wasn't very far away, was dry. So the ferry running between Thousand Islands Park and the Hub it was a busy place to be. <laughs> Eventually, the Thousand Islands Park people decided to uh, stop supporting that ferry, but the guy that owned the ferry also owned the hub house. So the ferry kept running and just didn't go to the Thousand Islands Park. Yeah. Pullman House. How many know that Pullman, was, what, Pullman Island was once a part of Cornell Island? It washed out, made a new, made a new island, out of one, two islands out of one. When they bought home, they built that place. 85 by 50, had the surround, surrounding porches on two stories. The hotels on the river would be an entire, another presentation. Of course, they came to Clayton, too, when we go to the Hubbard House, right downtown. So, and I'm sure that uh, there were other places they could stay, uh, river guides, you want to come up fishing, I'm sure that was a, an industry that uh, it's very popular. You get off the train with your fishing gear, or maybe just you and your guide would provide everything. You can go out there on the river and see if you can catch uh, some of the big game fish on the river that we know are still out there. Well, this is the New York Central System in 1906. At least the northern part of it. I don't want to worry about the city. And you can see that uh, there was a lot of railroad. Uh, the line I run on, taking off up there on the right hand side. The line from uh, Carthage up to Ben Newton Falls is still there. Unfortunately, the, uh, they spent several million dollars rehabbing that, and then they sold all the paper equipment from Newton Falls. Mm -hmm. So there's zero industry up there now. They haven't talked about bringing the tailings out of there, but I don't know how far that's got. I just know people who were involved in that. Well, I know the folks who wrote the uh, law in uh, Adirondack North. The law in Adirondack North. So there it gives you an idea. You can see the line going to Sackett's Harbor. You see the line going to Cape. You see the line coming over Clayton and uh, on up to Ogdensburg. Now the line you see right along the lake was actually part of the Royal Water Town in Ogdensburg, frequently referred to as a Hojack. That ran all the way over the lake to uh, 